What is the proper back focus for the Celestron 6SE telescope attached to a ASI 294 MC Pro camera? Um, this is the question that I've gotten commonly and one that I've had trouble actually answering myself. I scoured the Cloudy Nights forums to find a few different answers. Uh, one is 50 millimeters of back focus, and that's what I've been using for my previous uh, shots. And uh, the other back focus that I've seen uh, suggested is 105 millimeters of back focus. So I really want to try shooting the moon tonight uh, at 105 millimeters of back focus just to see uh, what kind of resolution I can get and to see if that's the proper settings for this camera and this telescope rig. I don't want my images to be over or under sampled at all. And I think I got a bit of that when I was shooting the Orion Nebula with this setup before. The other little experiment that I plan to do tonight is take shots of the moon using a filter, the uh, UV and IR cut filter that I have from Bader Platinum. Um, and I'm also going to be comparing that with images of the moon without using a filter. And the reason why this came about was because I was doing some research and found a, a Bader paper that was comparing the UV IR cut filter to the IR pass filter. With that paper, they concluded that uh, the IR pass filter actually gives you a bit better quality on the moon because it can cut through the atmosphere and get past that atmospheric distortion. Uh, but in that paper, they didn't really compare to taking shots of the moon with no filter. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to try to fill that gap in some sense. I know it's not going to be a true comparison to the beta paper that uh, I've seen, but I really want to see what I can get with the gear that I have. And so what I'm going to be doing tonight is taking shots of the moon with a UV IR filter and then not using the filter. Uh, I don't know if opening up that spectrum will degrade my images at all or if cutting it off at the top and bottom uh, will provide better images. My thoughts are using the UV IR cut filter will provide a bit better results. I think it'll help with some light pollution. I think it'll help with uh, the uh, lower end of the spectrum, the UV spectrum. And uh, yeah, we'll see. So stay tuned. Uh, it's a cold Toronto night, but uh, I'm going to take advantage of it and uh, yeah, let's get started. All right, so this is the uh, imaging train for tonight. At the back of the telescope, you have the 6.3 focal reducer followed by the 50 millimeter uh, T adapter. I then have a 16 millimeter adapter attached to the Starzona filter tray. And that is attached to another 22 millimeter adapter. And then the ZWO ASI 294. Okay, so I was able to attach my mini PC to the bottom of the dovetail bar for this Celestron 6SE telescope. It actually helps me with the balancing of the telescope. Instead of having to move the whole telescope, I can move uh, just the PC up and down to see if that balances the telescope. Okay, so I've hooked up my little monitor out here, and you guys can see the diffraction spike that I'm getting. Uh, and I, yeah, I can play with the focus to get this perfect. All right, that looks pretty good. That's a really good diffraction spike. All right, guys, so everything is set up. Uh, I even had time to actually collimate the telescope as well, which is nice, uh, even though it didn't need too much uh, collimation. And uh, I also did a focus and a star alignment. So I'm ready to go. Uh, I'm still waiting for the moon. I can see it through the trees right now. Um, it's gonna be up in, in my backyard in about an hour or so. And uh, once that happens, I'm gonna start taking some images on it. The first set of images that I'm gonna be taking on it are with the UV IR cut filter. I already have that filter installed in the Starzone filter tray. Hopefully my hands aren't shaking too much because it's freezing out. Ooh, don't drop the glass. And after that, I'm gonna be doing uh, no filter. I'm going to take about 300 shots uh, for each set of these images and then stack around 200 or so by choosing the best. And um, I'm not going to do any processing in those images. I'll show you what quality I get just by stacking alone. And then later on, once I find out which one's the best quality, uh, I might process an image in PixInsight. Anyways, as I said, I have to wait for this moon to show up. So I'm going to head back inside and we'll talk to you guys soon. So the plan for tonight is to shoot the moon uh, around one o'clock or so. 
Uh, at that point, the moon will be highest in the sky, between one and two, and uh, then I'll be able to get the best images possible. I won't have as much atmosphere to cut through, and uh, yeah, that'll be a really good time to do this experiment. Alright, so I'm just starting my session, and uh, I've got my filter in there. I've settled on an exposure of 5.5 milliseconds, and uh, I'm taking my first 400 subs. Um, again, this is with the filter. After this, I'm going to take out the filter, regain focus, and then point my telescope uh, at the moon again and start taking some subs. Uh, and then after that, I'll start comparing my results. Ooh. All right, it's getting cold outside, so uh, let's hurry up. I have the UV IR cut filter inside the telescope that I'm gonna take out right now. I've already done my shots for the night with that, and uh, I'm gonna take some shots without that filter in. Once I take the filter out, I have to regain focus, and then I'm gonna point back at the moon and start taking some more frames. Ooh. All right, so I'll catch you guys in a bit. We're going inside. Well, I forgot that I need to regain focus and put the Batnaf mask on, so let's do that before I get back inside. All right, so I think my focus is now good. Um, I'm gonna go back inside and take those final frames. All right, so I'm back inside again from uh, getting focus, and it looks like I'm gonna have to change my exposures. So my exposure is of 5.5 milliseconds. It looks like it's gonna be a bit too much without the filter. Uh, that filter is definitely dimming the light coming into the telescope. So I'm gonna change this to maybe to 4.5 first and see how that does. Um, all right, 4.5 is looking pretty good, but it still looks like some of the spots on the moon are overexposed a bit, even though I'm not getting the best of quality uh, when capturing this with TeamViewer. Um, so I'm gonna drop this down to 4.0 milliseconds. We'll try that. All right guys, so I'm about to call it quits for the night. It's about 2.30 in the morning and uh, I can say that my imaging session went great. Uh, I've collected a lot of data tonight on the moon and uh, I gotta pack it in and start stacking my images tomorrow morning. I have to get up early in the morning, so I'm not gonna be able to do that tonight, um, but I will check in with you guys in a bit and uh, I'll see you then. Good night, tips. Okay, so it's a new day and I'm back inside uh, looking at my stacked images from AutoStacker. AutoStacker uh, gives me two images when I stack them. Uh, it gives me one image that is just stacked and it also gives me another image that has stacking also with sharpening. Um, so I'm going to look at both of those and uh, just use them as an example. Um, but I also have my two images here, the uh, images taken with no filter and the images taken with the filter, the UVIR cut filter from Bader Planetarium. Uh, so let's open up the uh, no filter image uh, with no sharpening applied and uh, you can see it looks like a pretty good image um, there are some overexposed areas but uh, I can't really fix that now uh, the way to fix that is to take images with less exposure um, so that is, that is my fault but yeah let's take a look at what the images look like with the UV IR cut filter again with no sharpening and I can already see that it looks like I'm getting a lot more detail when using this filter if I just uh, page between these two yeah, you can definitely see a lot more quality in the UVR cut filter. Um, even though I do have that green tinge, uh, I'll be able to fix that in post-production. Um, I'm pretty happy with these results. The sharpened versions that uh, AutoStacker applies, um, they're not the best. I mean, it did uh, sharpen the image and it looks decent, but I find that I can get better detail if I uh, use the unsharpened mask tool in PixInsight. So I'm going to take my stacked version of this image and drop it into PixInsight and see what kind of magic I can do there. 
Um, so let's go there now. All right, so the first thing I want to do here is uh, separate the RGB channels, just like I do with my, my nebulas and all my other deep sky objects. So just drag this over using the channel extraction tool and you'll get your RGB channels. Next we're going to go to Processes, Image Inspection, and Statistics. And we're going to select our, our main image there. <clears throat> what I'm looking for is the lowest median readout, and I'm going to use that as a reference on the linear fit uh, function that PixInsight has. So right now I see the red channel is that. Of, it has a median readout of 1.2 compared to the green and blue channels. So let's open up the linear fit process and use R as our reference channel here. R. Uh, we'll also minimize R so we can get that out of the way. And we'll drag the linear fit over to the blue channel. And once that's done, we're going to switch over to the G channel and do the same thing. Nice. And now the G channel. Okay, so now that that is all done, uh, we're going to use the channel combination to bring all that back together into one image. Select your R, G, and B channels, and press the circle button. Nice. Alright, let's minimize all this first. And the linear fit. And uh, yeah, so we are left with this image. Uh, this is more of a true color image a representation of the moon compared to this image here. Um, and yeah, that looks pretty nice. The next thing that I want to do is apply some sharpening to this. And to do that, I'm going to use the Unsharpen Mask tool. Uh, this tool can be pretty aggressive, but uh, let's just try with the preview and uh, yeah, see what we get. Select a preview of the middle here. And actually, let's grab a bit of this. There we go. Alright, so let's see if we can apply some sharpening here. It's already set at an amount of 80. Uh, let's just see what we get with these results. Wow. I'm really impressed. I think I'm just going to apply that to the image as is. Alright, let's remove the preview. And just apply this to the image. Nice, you can already see a lot of good detail out of there. That looks great. All right, let's uh, move on from sharpening and go to do some more adjustments with the color of the moon. Now, the first thing I want to do is actually create a, a range mask, range selection, actually. And I'm going to try to grab those overexposed areas and not touch them. So I'm going to invert that mask once I create it. Um, yeah, let's let's see what we get here. So the really overexposed areas are again right beside this crater here. Yeah, right there, as well as uh, this section of the image. So that might be a good mask to, to start with. Close our preview, and yeah, now we have a mask. So let's apply this mask to our moon, and uh, remember red protects, so we want to invert this mask. And now we can start doing some adjustments with the curves transformation. And yeah, you really don't have to do too much here. Open up your preview window and start playing with some of these. Uh, one of the first things I do again is just contrast. Um, make some slight waves here to add a bit more contrast. All right, I like that. So let's apply this to the image first. And clear our settings and then go to the saturation. Uh, click the preview button again and start playing with your saturation. So as you can see, if I crank the saturation, you can get some really nice colors out of the moon. Um, but obviously we can't see that with our naked eye. So I like to dial that back a bit and make it look a bit more realistic. Uh, you can also up that by using the C here. And that's looking pretty good. I'm liking that. Okay, uh, so let's apply this to, 
to the image. Uh, we'll close the preview here and apply. You're going to see a drastic difference in color here. I might be a bit... Uh, no, it's actually not too bad. I was thinking I might be a bit too ag aggressive on that, but it's just bumping up those colors uh, quite nicely. That's about it. I'm going to save this as an image, and uh, yeah, call it quits. Thanks for watching, and hopefully you guys learned something.